Last night, hundreds of people gathered outside the Oxford Union to protest against a talk by the gender-critical academic Professor Kathleen Stock. They were chanting outside the building. Trans rights! Oxford University students were calling for Professor Stock to be no platforms, as it's called, in solidarity with the trans community. They urged the Oxford Union to rescind its so-called misguided invitation to the academic. Now, uh, the professor, Kathleen Stock, has been criticised for her view that trans women are not the same as women. She argues that spaces where women undress and sleep should remain, in her words, genuinely single sex. Unusually, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak commented on the situation at Oxford, saying we mustn't allow a small but vocal few to shut down discussion. Agree or disagree with her, Professor Stock is an important figure in this argument. Students should be allowed to hear and debate her views. A group of demonstrators infiltrated the debate last night, including two waving rainbow flags and throwing leaflets, and one who tried unsuccessfully to glue themselves to the floor in front of Professor Stock. So we'd love your thoughts. Was the Oxford Union right to give her a platform, regardless of all the argy-bargy? Or do you think that her views constitute hate speech and there are some things that shouldn't be allowed a platform? Email vine at bbc.co.uk. Please include your phone number so we can get back to you and get you on the programme. Text me 88291 or WhatsApp me on the long number, which is 0802882921. Going to talk to Katie Montgomery, feminist, trans activist, and herself a trans woman, and Baroness Claire. Fox, the director of the Academy of Ideas and the author of I Find That Offensive. Katie, help us out first understand why people shouted so loudly and felt so strongly about Kathleen Stock. Right. Um, so the reason people are protesting is because Dr. Stock and the gender critical movement that she is one of the figureheads of are campaigning to remove almost all trans rights we have today in this country. Trans rights that people like me need in order to just live normal and safe lives like we do today. And trans rights that the students at the university need in order to even study there. For example, she wants to ban all trans women and girls from all women's spaces, including toilets. And if you were banned from the women's toilets at university how could you possibly study at the university if you couldn't go to the toilet and you know that's why people are so uh, upset about this and are protesting it so strongly because if she got her way then i mean i I fear for my future in this country. If if the gender critical movement gets their way, then I feel like I couldn't live my life. I couldn't go to toilet work, etc. And that's what the students there feel too. Claire, Claire Fox, is that? I suppose that's the logical extension. If you say that trans women can't use women's loos, they may feel there is nowhere for them to go. Well, I don't think it's entirely reducible to that. But I don't think also it's accurate to say that Professor Stock or myself or others want to remove trans rights. I think that trans people should have the same equal rights as anyone else. That's entirely appropriate. But what you can't do is say that as a consequence of affording, in this instance, a right that doesn't exist in a normal situation, that non-biological females can enter into female only spaces i mean that is a completely different question and i'm you know if you want a unisex toilet fine campaign for that but that's not what's being campaigned for so you know men have equal rights men have rights but they're not allowed to walk into a woman's toilet or men can't just walk into women's only spaces so trans people have rights in this country no one's trying to take them away no one is trying to attack trans rights at all that's not actually true because she is campaigning like for example the EHRC recently wrote to the government asking for them to change the Equality Act to allow uh, public institutions such as universities to ban trans women from the toilets because today they can't do that today but, the law is and has been for my entire life that trans women and girls can use women's spaces and that's what we do and they want to change um, the law in order to ban us from those spaces is it, but this is but this, sounds, only, this conversation is just revolving around toilets so far is it if that's all it's it not is just toilets well, it's also yeah. just, um, protections from misogynistic sexism for example that's something else the equality act covers if i was to face misogynistic sexism at work I could then, you know, take that through the courts process and the EHRC, which is a move that the Dr. Stock and the gender, wider gender critical movement supports, 
have said that trans women shouldn't have that protection. So, so there's loads of stuff to it's, this. It's, Claire, is your situation that you don't believe that trans women should have women's rights? They want, you want them to have other rights, is that right? Not, yeah, they have other rights and they are not in a position to... They can't have women's rights because they're biologically not women. But can I just clarify what's still facing a Hang on, Katie, yeah. sorry. Can I just uh, clarify something? We're in a situation here where women, for speaking out on women's rights, are being attacked in a misogynistic way as it happens. The Equalities and Human Rights Commission, and um, by the way, led by Kishma Faulkner, Baroness Faulkner, I came under huge... Sorry, huge I can't, I can't, if you tell me, you both on the line, if you talk over... Go so on. For Sorry, she came under a, a huge amount of assault, bullying, etc., for clarifying the law, which is that the law on equality allows single sex uh, spaces to exist that excludes people who are not of that biological sex. She was clarifying that law. That's her role. And so as a consequence, we've ended up narrowing down what this discussion is about. But I would like to go back to the broader point, which is what you started on, Jeremy, which is we are here, and I'm glad that Casey's on the line and so on and so forth. There is an argument to be had, fair enough, and we, we don't agree. My problem is that that argument is not had out in the public square. Last night was an opportunity for those students who were protesting outside, defend their right to protest, that's fine, but those who got in to actually ask the kind of questions that you're raising, Katie. Why didn't they take that opportunity? Because it's said that anyone who asks questions or queries what has become a very, uh, you know, brittle ideological position in relation to gender identity is called a bigot, transphobic, okay. and there's an well, attempt at silencing let's, them. Let's get to that, Katie. Why, why, but hang on, why try and stop Kathleen Stock speaking, Katie. That's what I don't understand, even if you yeah. disagree with her. So, so, I mean, it's the same as stopping anyone who is campaigning to take away human rights from any other group. If you had you a university... speaking, though. If you had a university which repeatedly invited men who speakers who wanted to say ban women from going to university at all or to keep them at home in the kitchen or some disgusting or aggressive review like that, then obviously the women students at that university wouldn't feel safe. They wouldn't feel respected by the university. That regardless of whether you care about their feelings or not, they would perform worse at university. They would stop going to that university. They wouldn't apply to it. And if that was the standard across the whole country, then women's education would suffer. And that's exactly a, what isn't, isn't trans it fair, people are facing today. Katie, isn't it fair to say that this is a anyone. more contested area, Katie, than the, the areas you describe? And that because well, it's yes, contested, we need to hear the arguments. But I mean... 20 or 30 years ago, it was contested whether gay people should be allowed to, you know, get married and have sex with each other and things. And that was an immoral position to say um, they couldn't. Um, and it's the same. To, I mean, same today. We're, of course, we're having this trans panic that we're living through. But it's not like, you know, we don't know what the arguments are. This is not some kind of, oh, this is the first time people can hear this. We've been debating this for decades now. But the reality is that trans people need these rights to live. And she's calling to take them away. Claire. She isn't calling to take away any rights, as I've already pointed out. But even if I use the analogy well, that's, that Katie's that's untrue, used, though. that's just untrue. If, true, if we uh, use the analogy that Katie uses, hang on, sorry, please, you, you can't both barrack each other yeah. uh, because we just can't hear anything because you're on the line. Go again, yeah. Claire Fox. Thank you. If um, if you're in, even to use the analogy that Katie's used, if it were the case that some regressive sexist male argued that there was women should be tied to the kitchen sink. My attitude is, as a free speech woman, would not be to call for that person to be banned. I would either not go to the debate or I'd go and argue with the person. So that's the first thing to clarify. Secondly, I think that to compare it to uh, the actual situation with lesbians and gays in the past when, by the way, homosexuality was illegal for men and women were just ignored is completely fallacious because actually being trans is not illegal today. There is no illegality. If as an adult you wish and want to transition, that is within your right. That's perfectly acceptable. I'm not arguing anything else. And indeed, Kathleen Stock has made it clear that she is not even opposed to the t to to uh, gender certificates. She's never argued that. She calls for respect. What we're talking about are people claiming that they have let, let rights come in. that intrude. Let Katie come in. Rights. 
Yeah, I mean, she, it's just factually untrue to say that she isn't calling to change the law. I mean, they're definitely calling to change the Equality Act. That's one of the things that gender critical people are pushing for now, and also to ban trans health care for children, which you kind of alluded to. But this is about being able to participate in society at all. If trans women like me are banned from using the women's toilets, which is, you know, an overused example, but also from going to the gym to use the changing rooms or from having protections from misogyny at work or, you know, all the other things that women have protection for today and trans women have protection for today, then we couldn't participate in society. I couldn't have a job. Students couldn't study at that university. We wouldn't be safe in, in everyday life. And that's, so you know, that's... Is it fundamentally, uh, Katie, at the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom of this is a very... It's almost a factual disagreement between the two sides, which is whether or not a person born male can transition and become female. But and I don't just actually think that matters. Because, you don't think it matters? I mean, trans, well, trans, trans women like me, regardless of what, you know, belief you have about whether I'm a man or a woman or, or something else, I still face misogynistic sexism in society. I still get, you know, I've been followed home by men uh, on the night out. I've been sexually assaulted so many times. And if, if something... If I was to face misogyny at work, which thankfully I haven't because I have a very good workplace, then I should have legal protections from that, at, you know, in the same way that any other person. Do you, do you, you okay, know, women. Is, is, so, is it your view that tra the words, yes, I'll come back to you, Claire. Is it your view that the, the, the tr trans woman, that phrase, is different from woman, simply from woman, that they are two different things? I so the term that I would use for someone who isn't trans is cis, and I think trans women and cis women are obviously different. We have, you know, different pasts, but we are both types of women who face misogynistic sexism and the, tr the struggles that women face in society with that. Right, Claire, come back in. I'm not a cis woman, I'm a woman. You cannot change your biological gender. You kind of call your biological sex. You can feel a gender as much as you want. You can dress how you want. The thing that is galling here is that you've got to bear in mind that everything from uh, refuges for people facing domestic violence, situations where women's sport are actually, as we speak, having people who are biologically male enter into them and women fought long and hard for the protections of those spaces as women only spaces but also i refuse to be coerced into denying a biological reality and i want to finally comment on the young people denied medical care young people who are going through puberty may be confused about who or where they are should not be in any way entered into a medical path of either puberty blockers or encouraged or affirmed into using chest binders or encouraged, as often many young lesbians are, to think of themselves as maybe as a young lesbian, to think of themselves as maybe changing their right. sex and their we're gender to become a boy. We're going into every angle of this now, but Katie, I'll give you the last word. Reply to that. Important. No, I, I do understand it's, it's all important. That's the trouble. Katie. Yeah, I just think that, you know, having this argument, are trans women women, is, is unimportant. Like, it doesn't matter what you call yourself or anything. I still face misogynistic sexism and should have protections from that. The wider international medical community thinks that trans kids should have health care. That's, you know, does it make a, Katie, does it make a difference that uh, a couple of stories we've had from Scotland, which have been very concerning, I know will have concerned you as well, where people, uh, men who are bad actors have got into this, and one of them was Isla... Bryson, and the other one was somebody who, who dressed up and called himself Amy George uh, in order to lure a child into a car, and then the whole argument get, just veers off into very, very nasty territory. Does that worry you? I mean, there are some trans people who are criminals, that just like there are any minority. They, they may criminals. not even be trans people, though. Oh, I don't see any reason why they aren't trans people. But I love I mean, Bryson. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't see what evidence we have to say that Isla Bryson isn't a trans woman. Well, she's just a trans woman who's committed... Uh, I mean, even if... Even, well, okay, the, even their if, name was even Adam Graham, isn't. but but I was going to say, th th this, yeah, he was okay. a multiple even rapist if, whose ex-wife said he had never once expressed any interest in being a woman. Yeah, I mean, LGBT people often stay in the closet for a long time in their lives, but even if the Ilsa Bryson case is, you know, a man pretending... That, Pretending to be trans doesn't give you any benefit in society. Obviously, this person has ended up in a men's prison and, and committed horrific crimes and hopefully is, faces the full you know, force of the law on those crimes. Um, but wouldn't gain anything from 
saying you're trans. Like that's the way it, people don't do it. If if a man wants to abuse a woman, wants to rape someone, wants to break the law, they just do it. That, okay. that happened. You well, know, I, when when I've been sexually right. assaulted, no one's had to pretend to be a woman in order to do that. Uh, Isla Bryson, I think, went into a woman's prison first. Claire, okay, okay gone. Quickly, Claire, just, and I've just got to go into quickly, it. The, the gain of saying if you are a sex offender that you are a woman is that you can enter into a woman's prison. That is at least the intention, and that therefore gives you access to women. I right. hardly need to explain it any further than okay. that. But I don't want it to just be the extremes. There can also just be matters of privacy and material reality. And I keep saying this, but it's important. This is an argument and a discussion that should be had out. There will be many young people who are confused about what they think of the issue at universities and are frightened to even ask questions in case they're do dubbed a bigot. Okay. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm only going to leave it there because say, I wanted just to make sure you... All th respect to her. Thank you. I just want to make sure you both got ex the, 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 the same amount of time. We've had quite a long time on it. I do appreciate you, you engaging in the interesting way that you did. Baroness Claire Fox, director of the Academy of Ideas and author of a book called I Find That Offensive, and Katie Montgomery, feminist trans activist, uh, so a trans woman talking about the the business at Oxford last night where there was an attempt to stop a person speaking because they say that if you're born a man you can't become a woman that's fundamentally it <laughs>